where we love the Lord. And we come to worship him today, to praise his name, to glorify him. And so I want you to sit back, enjoy yourself, and enjoy the praise and worship, and then get ready for the word of God. Amen? So let's hear from our worship team now. Hallelujah. Amen.
good, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. And thank you for that praise team. Thank you. Amen. If you've got your Bibles uh, with, with you, I'm going to ask that you, even though you're at home, please stand with us as we read the word of God this morning. I'm coming from the book of Acts, chapter 5, verses 24 through 32. Uh, the book of Acts, chapter 5, verses 24 through 32. Amen. I know um, uh, we've been home for a few weeks, if not a month or so, and, and we're sort of probably getting used to uh, not, not getting up when we read the Word of God, but we want to be respectful. We want to do what we know to do. Amen? So let's stand with me as we read the Word of God this morning. I'm coming from the New King James Version, and here's what it says. Now, when the high priest, the captain of the temple, and the chief priests heard these things, they wondered what the outcome would be. So one came and told them, saying, Look, the man whom we put the men whom we put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain went with the officers and brought them out uh, without violence for they feared the people lest they should be stoned verse 27 says and when they had brought them they set them before the council and the high priest asked them saying did we not strictly command you not to teach in the name or in his name and look you have fulfilled or you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood on us. Verse 29 says uh, uh, this, it says, But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The, good of our, the God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you murdered by hanging him on a tree. Him, God has exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior, yeah. to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Yeah. That last verse in the passage says, and we are his witnesses to these things. And so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. Amen. Let's pray to the Lord. Father, thank you, God, for this day and for rising, raising us up this morning, God, allowing us to rise and to, to meet here that we may be obedient, God, and bring your word, bring your word and song, and, and then, God, to deliver the message that you have given. Use it, Father, to loose shackles this morning. Lo use your word, Father God, to, to, to loose those, God, who are held captive. God, change lives this morning, save souls this morning. For that, God, we say thank you in advance. We glorify your name now, and we give this hour over to you. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you're standing, you may be seated. Thank you for that red word of God. There is a saying that you may not be that familiar with. In fact, I had to do a little research on it. This particular Sunday after Easter, this first Sunday after Easter, is unofficially called Empty Pew Sunday. How do you like that? Empty Pew Sunday. In some churches, it's called Renewal Sunday uh, for those who doubt to renew their faith in the Lord. It's also called the octave or the octave octave of Easter. In other words, eight days after Easter. Uh, it, it, is, it is in the Catholic Church called Divine Mercy Sunday. Nevertheless, it's, it's unofficially called Empty Pew Sunday. As I, as I look out, I see rows of empty pews and and it's so fitting because literally there are just a few of us here. So fitting. 
It's amazing how God orchestrates things to have such a meaning on the exact day. Uh, uh, some of you have become antsy, I know, because you may be feeling, I, I know in my household we're feeling a little antsy. Uh, it's, it's getting harder and harder to stay home and, and it's, getting, it's getting harder to, to keep our distance. And it, it, but but no, nevertheless, some of you are just plain tired. It, it's been about a month or so. It's, it's, it's been about a month of, of enclosure, a month of isolation, a month of social distancing. But listen, while you are antsy, while you're tired, um, don't, don't allow yourselves to fall short on the Lord. Uh, I know you're antsy. Uh, I, I see people coming and going. I see people starting to, do, to become a little bit more active. Uh, but here's the problem. Cracks have began to develop in our character. Cracks have began to show up in our personalities, in our attitudes, and, and warning signs are now visible. If you listen to the news, Mecklenburg County put out its latest statistics which reveal that liquor sales are on the rise. They're up 29% since the last, over the last four months, uh, four weeks. And there is an 18% increase in domestic violence, uh, those calls that are coming in to 911. Cracks are starting to show up. Now, listen, uh, more so than ever before, your witness for Jesus Christ is paramount. The one whom you call Savior, the one whom you call Lord, uh, uh, it is paramount that your witness for him remain steadfast. As we continue in this season of self-distancing and uh, 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 isolating from one another during this mandatory stay at home, let me encourage you to remain steadfast in your witness. That's what I want to talk about today. Remain steadfast in your witness. Jesus' last recorded words uh, have become known as the Great Commission. You shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and, and in all of Judea and Samaria and to the furthest ends of the earth. The word says, uh, you shall be witnesses unto me. In the book of Acts, Luke wrote the story Story after story of, of the men and women who took the commission seriously and began to spread the word of God all over what they knew as the earth. That is, uh, at, at their time, their world consisted of uh, villages in and around uh, Israel, uh, in Israel, in and around Jerusalem, such as Judea, Judea and uh, Samaria, Damascus, Damascus, and Bethlehem, just to name a few. Today, you and I, I have the, the distinct honor of furthering that great commission uh, throughout the entire world. Can you imagine? Just like the apostles in that day, we have the distinct honor of sharing God's word being a witness for him, we are privileged individuals to have the benefit of the world geology classes and all types of globes and maps and paper maps and now they have electronic maps and modern voice activated applications that can take you anywhere in the world in just a few seconds. Virtually, of course, all you've got to do is say, I don't hear anything. What? All you've got to do is just call out and say, and you won't hear anything. But if you say the magic word, if you say, show me India, guess what? India will pop up on your screen. If you say, show me South Africa, 
Guess what? South Africa will show up on your screen. All you got to do is speak your voice these days. All you got to do is say a few commands. We're living in such a time that we're privileged. We have the honor. We have the application to go anywhere in this world. Just speak the commands Amen. and see once you arrive at the doorsteps. You can now click on the little man in yellow. Drop him down on the street right in front of the location where you want to be. Then you can take the navigations and, and, and move, pan to the left, pan to the right, and you can see the doorsteps. You can see the building number. You can actually see people who were in the photo during the time it was taken. That's how privileged we are. That's how technology has advanced. We can go anywhere now. Our world is just not uh, 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 held to just a few villages or a few uh, surrounding communities of Charlotte, North Carolina, or, or, or in, the, in the United States. No, we have the entire world to spread God's word. Yeah. After Jesus ascended to heaven, Luke tells the story of the disciples with, uh, where they were with the women, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and they were united in the upper room, praying. They were having their own modern day prayer meeting. Can you imagine Jesus showing up during their prayer meetings? That's what happens today when we go to God in prayer. We have our very own prayer meetings. Some of us are having our personal prayer meetings with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, and guess what? God shows up right in the nick of time, gives us an experience, and guess what? We just lift our hands and we worship him. Amen. Right in our very own, in the compass of our very own home. That's how good we have it today. But as, as, as the disciples were having their very own prayer meeting, uh, guess what? They received the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts lets us know that there were about 120 of them in the upper room when, when the Spirit showed up and landed on each and one of them. They were so united that they began to raise the roof off the place. Hallelujah. That's what prayer does. Prayer gets God's attention. Yeah. Things begin to shake. And so yeah. they had their very own prayer meeting there in the upper room. The disciples and the apostles continued after Jesus' ascension into heaven. They continued on the road giving that great commission, baptizing as God had added to the church daily. They continued healing the sick, performing and signs and wonders, and, and, and even so that a lame man was healed. Peter and John were arrested, and, 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 and Peter addressed the Sanhedrin council, the rulers, the elders, and the scribes, and and, and why did he do so? He, 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 wanted to, he wanted them to understand and experience him being filled with the Holy Spirit. Today, I, I, want to, I want to get quickly to the scriptures that I read in Acts chapter 5. A few more things took place leading up to that point. Uh, let me finish setting the stage here. The chief priest. The rulers and Peter and John, they had, he had Peter and John arrested and, and thrown into the prison. But he didn't stop Peter and John from giving the name of Jesus. Even though they were told and they were forbidden, do not give out that name of Jesus. Do not teach in the name of Jesus. Do not mention the name of Jesus. Well, just as you can imagine, this emboldened them. This emboldened them the more that they wanted to share and teach and give the word of God. The Bible says, with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection to the, of the Lord. And, and a great grace was upon them all. Acts 4.33. No one among them lacked anything. Listen to this. They were in such unity and so blessed that they lacked nothing. Nothing missing, nothing had to be added. They had everything that they needed. They had land and they had houses and, did, and they, they were so in tune with one another that they came and they sold everything 
they had and they brought it back to the feet of the, of the disciples. The word lets us know that, that the chief priests, they were filled with indignation. So much so that they rose up and they had the apostles once again thrown into the common prison. But at midnight, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors, brought them out and said, go stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. Acts lets us know that the chief priests with the elders and all the children of Israel, uh, they, they went out to the prison to have the apostles bring them in. But the, but the officers reported back that the prison was tightly secured. But when the guards opened the doors, the prison was empty. Hallelujah. Did you hear me? The prison was empty. <laughs> guards standing on their post. Yes. And here come the council and all their men and those who did not believe coming to the prison to get Peter and John and it was empty. This, this brings me back to chapter 5 in the book of Acts and, and, and there are some key things here that, that I want to point out to you. There, there are some, some things that I think will bless your soul. It will encourage you. It will give you hope and it will keep you going for, for a few more weeks I, be, I do believe. Listen, it will help you remain steadfast in your witness for the Lord. Acts chapter 5, go with me back, back to the scripture. Acts chapter 5 verse 24 says this, Now when the high priest, the captain of the temple, and the chief priests heard these things, they wondered what the outcome would be. See, I told you several weeks back, people had their eyes on you. They are looking at you and me and, and, and they are wondering, why are we so calm and, and why are we so peaceful? What, listen, it's because we've got the presence of God on the inside of us. We've got the spirit of God dwelling on the inside. We have, we have availed ourselves to the Lord that he is with us night and day. His word lets us know that he would neither leave us nor forsake us. Amen. And people are watching. So when the officers went, the, the Bible says that they wondered what the outcome would be. Verse 25 says, so one came and told them, saying, look, look, the men whom you put in there, in the prison, are standing in the temple teaching the people. Uh, listen, they were standing in the temple preaching. Can you imagine? that? That's why the council was a little concerned. They, they didn't know what to do, what to expect, because they weren't where, the, where Peter and John had been put, but yet here they are out in the yeah. temple, yeah. preaching, teaching the word of God, yeah. Yeah. teaching the word of God. The, the, listen, Psalms 51 says, says, then I will teach transgressors your ways. And sinners shall be converted to you, Lord. Listen, not only do we get to teach Jesus' word, not only do we get to, to model, but listen, we, we get to model Christ. We get to put on Jesus. We get to roll around and, 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 and run around and we get to say, look at me, uh, not boasting, but yet just showing off Jesus. Because we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. Amen. See, we get to do that today. I, I know you're antsy and, and, and tired and, and, and you're ready to get out. Some of you are already out, and, uh, uh, but, but it has been a long month uh, and, and you're ready to go, ready to get your way and, and, and ready to do something different, do something fun, hang out with the boys, hang out with the girls, and, and, but, but in doing so, don't succumb to the cracks that are already starting to show. Don't allow those things that those those things that are starting to 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 peek their head to to take you down and to turn you away from Jesus. I I know pressure is on and COVID nineteen has some of you some of you worried, but but don't allow your witness to falter. Take Christ Amen. 
and show him off to the world. Remain steadfast in your witness. Verse 26, verse 26 says, then the captain went, the captain went to the officers and brought them without violence. For they feared the people, lest they should be stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did we not strictly command you not to teach in his name? Did we not tell you don't mention the name of Jesus? Did we not say don't talk to anybody about Jesus? And look! You have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood on my hands. Uh, as witnesses, uh, you get to tell your story. Uh, Acts 4, 20 says, For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Uh, as a witness for Jesus, tell your story today, your, your, your testimony. You owe it to God to spread the story that he has given you. Listen, listen to me. No one, no one can say they don't have a story to tell. If you're breathing, God has blessed you. It, it, listen, if you're standing today, if you're able to look around today, if you're listening to this video today, God has blessed you. Don't say that God hasn't. You have a story to tell. God has put a testimony in your mouth, has he not? It's time to share. It's time to tell. It's time to be a witness for Jesus. Verse 29 says, But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than man. Amen. As a witness, this third thing I want to tell you as a witness, you, you get to model obedience before the world. Uh, I, I believe one of the biggest issues that, that we as believers have when it comes to Jesus, when it comes to the Lord, is our disobedience. When, listen, when Samuel, when Samuel went to anoint Saul king, God, God instructed Saul to go and kill uh, the Amalekites because, because of what Amalek had done to the Israelites. God said in 1 Samuel 15, 3, now go and attack Amalek. And utterly destroy all that they have. Do not spare them. Do not leave anything unturned. Kill them, he said, both men and women, infants and nursing children, oxen, sheep, camel, don donkeys. Leave nothing. Kill all of them, is what he said. Those were the instructions. Verse 9 in 1 Samuel, verse 9 uh, uh, in 1 Verse 9, 15 in, in uh, 1 Samuel says this. But Saul and his people spared Agar and the best of the sheep, the best of the oxen, and, and the fatlings, you know, uh, the, the best of everything, the lambs and all the good, all the bad stuff they got rid of. Isn't that how we do today? We'll take our worst and give it to somebody. We, listen, God has blessed us. Instead of giving somebody our best, our first, we'll take the very thing that we don't want and we'll give it to somebody else. Th this, is what, this is what Saul did. After God had instructed him, Saul, leave nothing alive. Kill everything. What did Saul do? Saul, Saul left the king. He let the king go. Let the king live. He, he let the sheep and other animals live, the best of them. Well, Samuel had to, had to declare unto Saul, listen, obedience is better than sacrifice. See, some of us think we know it better than God. In fact, we think we are better than God. Sometimes we think we have to sacrifice ourselves. And, but God hasn't called us to sacrifice anything. He's already done that through his son, Jesus. Jesus died, paid the price for our sins, and that settles it. There is nothing else needed. Listen, we don't have to sacrifice ourselves our children, our income, our homes, nothing like that. We just need to be obedient 
to the word of God. Remain steadfast in your witness. Remain steadfast in your witness. When, when you are disobedient, it, 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 actually, it actually is an offense unto the Lord. The word says it is a sign of rebellious, of a rebellious sinful act. Uh, it, is, it is a sign of, of arrogance. And, and so, so God has called us to a place of obedience, not sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Amen? Amen. Remain steadfast. In your witness. When you remain steadfast, as the apostles did, the word Acts 5 30 says, The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you murdered, by hanging him on a tree. Him God has exalted to his right hand, to the Prince and the Savior, to, to give repentance to Israel. And forgiveness of your sins, my sins, all the sins that, that we have committed. He paid the price. Third verse 32 says, and we are his witnesses. Tell your neighbor, we are his witnesses. Tell somebody who's, who's nearby, listen, you are God's witness today. Stand up, tell your story. Stand up, be a witness for the Lord. Don't be afraid to share your testimony. He goes on to say, and we are his witnesses to these things. And so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those, listen to this, who obey him. Hallelujah. Who obey him. Hallelujah. God has called you to be a witness today. He has called us to share his word. By telling our story. He has called us. To be witnesses. In every facet of the earth. The word lets us know that. Blessed. Is the man who remains steadfast. Under trial. Under pressure. Listen. Who, who is antsy. Who, who, is, who is succumbing to the pressures. Of this world. It's a tall order I know. Mandates. Stay home that lives may be saved. It's been over a month and it's getting hard to do. I, 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 I know you're tired. I know you're ready to get out. But I just wanted to tell you today, remain steadfast, unshakable, unmovable, abounding in the word of God. Listen, when, we, when you do that, God will be pleased. In fact, when you tell his story, when you show up, model Christ, be a witness to someone today. When you finally get out, be a witness. Tell your story. Remember, remain steadfast in your witness before Christ. Amen. The praise as the praise team come. I'm going to ask them to come in their own way softly. I want to say this. If if you don't have a story to tell, let me share mine and maybe it will encourage you. I grew up in the church and sang the songs of Zion in the church, played in and around and outside the church until I got ready to go off to college. It wasn't until I got to college, befriended a young man by the name of Juan Dennis, who became also my, uh, my roommate. It was because he had something that I saw in him that I didn't have in myself, and that was Jesus. Juan Dennis, who has become one of my best friends, he introduced me to Jesus. 
See, Jesus wasn't lost, I was. And I can tell you today, my story is this. Since I found Jesus, who wasn't lost, I was lost. Since Jesus came into my life, my life hasn't been the same since. In fact, it has been better. God has made a difference in my life. I know you have a story to tell. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, will you invite him into your heart today? Just repeat after me, Father, thank you for dying for my sins. Jesus, come into my heart, save me. I believe you died, was buried, rose on the third day, and you are now in heaven with God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. If you recite it, repeat it after me, that simple, short prayer, brothers and sisters, you are saved. Go out to HoskinsABC.com and let us know who you are and connect with us on our website. Uh, there you find instructions on how to give and sow into our ministry. Will you do so? We thank you today. Now, let us prepare to be dismissed. After the benediction, the praise team will continue to sing. Father, thank you for this word today. Thank you. Thank you, Father God, for the message of encouraging um, words that will help us in this time of isolation. Now that the cracks are starting to show in some of the others, Sin is starting to raise the rates of the statistics and may we God be the Jesus that others need to see. Thank you for reminding us to remain steadfast. So God that our witness will speak for you. We thank you today. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Enjoy the worship team. Praise team.
for joining us today. God bless you. God bless the music ministry here at Hospice Avenue Baptist Church. See you soon.